Welcome back to Mike's Archery's YouTube channel, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of those basic things in archery, tying on a D-loop. Now we're going to give you a couple options today of how to do, serve one in, as well as how to just tie a basic D-loop onto your string. Now the D-loop is a basic practice of archery at this point. Years gone by, there were a lot of different things that they used from knock points and tying on knock points and different things. The preferred way using a release these days is with a D-loop. So that's what we're going to look into. And we're going to, like I said, show you two different ways to do that. Now we're going to tie those both on a new bow. At no point have we set up anything. We don't have a rest on these bows. We just want to show you the basics of how to tie a D-loop and get that on your string. So to start with, if you're going to put a D-loop on your string, the first thing you're going to need to do is establish that knock point. So make sure your rest is already set up, mounted on the, onto the bow, and you have a proper knock height already figured out, whether that's an eighth inch high, or if you need a little higher depending on the setup, or even dead even depending on how you're, you're going to set that bow and that rest up. Make sure you have that point already factored in on your string. And I'll go ahead and set your center shot and all those things before you even get started to this point. From there, once you've established where that top knock point is going to be on your bow, then you want to step in there and tie that D-loop on. Some of the things you're going to need today for that, obviously some D-loop material. We typically use BCY24, but there's also a lot of other great materials out there from several other manufacturers. Some is a little stiffer, some is a little softer, depending on what you're trying to do and the setup you want. You know, folks will use a softer D-loop material to take more torque out of it, to, to get a little more flexibility in the loop. Some people want a really stiff D-loop uh, to come back there behind their arrow, always be sticking where they want it. And again, length is also an option for you as well. These two D-loops we're going to be tying today, we tend to tie a little shorter D-loop. If you're using a handheld release or need something a little longer, you can certainly lengthen those lengths of the thread and be able to tie a longer D-loop to adjust a little longer draw length or to allow for that rotation of a handheld release, whatever it is you're trying to do that you need a longer D-loop for. So a few things that you're going to need today to get that started besides the D-loop material is going to be a lighter, some serving thread, and depending on your setup, whether you want to use a set of D-loop pliers that's going to allow you to stretch that out. Typically, we just stretch it out with a release and put tension on that loop to tighten everything down but a set of d-loop pliers can be nice uh, if you don't mind having a little bigger loop because we have found that if you want to tie a smaller loop those d-loop pliers don't allow you to get in and tie as tight of a loop because of having to go around the actual pliers and things to get those tied in the first d-loop we're going to look at is just a basic d-loop being tied onto a string really the only thing you're going to need is a piece of D-loop. Now for the length that we're going to tie this loop on here, we normally cut our D-loop material about four and a half inches or so. Again, if you cut it longer, your loop is going to be longer. If you cut it much shorter than that, frankly, I don't know that you'll be able to tie it. But four and a half inches to four and three quarters of an inch is a pretty good base spot to be on tying a basic loop. From there, you're just going to take your loop material. You're going to start out underneath the bowstring and you're going to bring that for the bottom of, I, I tie the bottom first, it's going to come above this tail of D-loop, go around that tail that's sticking up, and then you're going to go back around the bowstring to the front, and then tuck that knot back in your loop. Once you've tied the bottom loop there, you're going to do the top, but you're going to do it reversed because you don't want your knots on the D-loop facing the same direction. So you're going to start on the top with this one. You're going to come back to the inside of the loop, then come back over top of your actual loop material there, back underneath the bowstring, and tuck that knot right back in so that it faces the opposite direction as the bottom one. And then we're just going to snug that with our fingers. Now prior to this, once you cut that, you are going to want to burn those ends. We typically burn them down a little bit, get a ball of, of heated material there, and then we flatten them out. So once you've tied that, a couple of things that you'll notice, and you may see these on other people's D-loops, a lot of people will tie them and both those knots will be facing the same way. 
technically that's wrong. You want those knots to be facing opposite, uh, and you want the bottom one to be on the left side of the bow and the top one to be on the right top side of the bow for a right-handed shooter. And the reason being for that, it allows for the rotation of the loop material. Uh, if you're shooting a handheld or something, it's going to rotate in the right direction. It's going to pull the string around right. But if you put them both the same direction, uh, it just it pulls the string differently. It's going to torque the string differently on your knock and things. So that is a basic D-loop. And then you can slide that into place where you need it to be. You can tighten that down with either a set of knock set pliers or just grab a release and put it in there and just kind of put some tension on it, pull it back tight so that you're cinching that knot into place. Uh, the name of that knot is a clove hitch, if you've seen those tied before, but it's, it's somewhat of a modified clove hitch because you're cutting the ends off and burning them tight in there. So that's going to be a, your basic D-loop. Nothing special about it, but it certainly gets the job done and will allow you to shoot a bow, not wear out the serving uh, underneath there, and just allows a, a nice way for you to be able to take the torque out of your shot, not wear out your string material, not wear out the release. All those things will just last on your bowstring so much longer uh, if you're shooting with a D-loop. The second type of loop we're gonna take a look at is a basic D-loop, but it's gonna have serving knock points in between the D-loop. So you're gonna serve in a serving knot for the top knock point and underneath the arrow for the bottom knock point. Now when you're doing this setup, there's gonna be a little bit of work involved. It's gonna take a little longer than just a basic D-loop. But you're, once again, you're gonna find that knock point where you need that top knock point to be. And then once you do that, you may need a press or something to hold that bow up because you're gonna to wanna to stick an arrow in there to where it's gonna hang vertically and get a 90 degree angle. And from there, you're gonna start tying over and under knots in place to create that top serving knot and then repeating that process into the bottom. And you're gonna see some close-ups here as I talk about this. So the over and under knots, you're gonna start with those at your top knock point and it's a basic double loop through overhand knot. So you're gonna tie a standard overhand knot and loop it through twice, pull that on the top, just pull it tight, and then you're gonna go underneath the string on the bottom and repeat that process, looping it through twice, and then tightening that up on the bottom. Now you're gonna stack three sets of those while you're tying this D loop in. So to do the serving knot, you're gonna do that over and under knot back and forth three different times. So on the top, you're gonna to tie it in, like I said, a double loop, and then go back under and do that three separate times. That's gonna stack those knots on your string. Once you get those three stack knots, you're gonna come back to the top again and then tie in a square knot to finish that off and burn it off. So left over right, right over left, and you get your basic square knot there on top, and you're good to go with that finished off. Take you a lighter and burn those ends off to finish them. From there, you're going to come underneath your knock, which you're going to have snapped on the string in the press, and you're going to repeat that process, tying three sets of those over and under knots back and forth and stacking those and then finishing off with a square knot at the bottom and burning those off. Once you have those two serving spaces in place, you're going to want to leave just a hair of space between for your knock to kind of float just a little bit, just about a millimeter or so. Not a lot of space. You don't want it floating around in there all kinds of places, but you want just enough in there that the knock's not sitting tight. It's going to take the pressure off your knock from the top and the bottom. It's going to remove down pressure off your rest or possibly up pressure pulling your arrow off the rest. Now once you've got those two served or tied in there and served in, then you're going to go ahead and cut your loop material again. You're going to want to cut this one a little longer than a basic loop and we cut it about four and three quarters of an inch so that it's going to have a little more loop material to go above and below these knots because it's going to have to be a little bit longer. From there you're going to do exactly the same process as tying your standard D-loop. Again, that clove hitch, you're just going to start at the bottom, around that, and tuck it back up underneath, cinch that up, and then push it up tight against those serving knots that you've already tied there. From there, repeat that process on the top, coming back inside your loop, underneath the bowstring, and tucking that knot in once again, and then snugging that up either with a release or with a set of loop set pliers. Now what you're gonna see is that is gonna eliminate the torque on your arrow and down and up pressure. It's just gonna give you a nice space in between there where you can place that arrow. It's gonna sit firmly 
uh, have no movement and just create better accuracy all around. It's a little more involved process to tie that loop, uh, but we do feel it's a little better process as well. So either one of them will function and will work wonderfully for the setup. Just make sure you're adjusting what you need for your loop length uh, and, and proper setup there. Now there are a lot of different ways to tie loops, whether you do a serving knot top, serving knot bottom only, top and bottom. There's other ways to even tie on loops besides these. These are just a couple basic ways that we wanted to look at today to help you out at home if you're trying to replace a loop or tie your first D loop and you just want to get more involved with your particular setup and, and your archery setup. Hopefully this will help you a little bit in how to tie some basic D loops and get you started in archery. Thanks for tuning in to Mike's Archery once again. As always, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification, and leave us some comments in the comment section below. We always love to hear what our customers have to say. Check us out on social media and give us some likes on there as well. <music>